Hello, Andy, and thank you very much for being a guest on About Freedom Show. How are you today? Thank you. I'm I'm fine, and I'm ready to uh, go back into the light for a few minutes. That's beautiful. Let's start with uh, with your NDE first. Yes. Um, it happened in 1955, two days before my graduation from high school. We went as a class out for a picnic, and this is in outside of Detroit City in Michigan. And we went out in the country a little bit to a lake, and uh, we had some lunch, and then my friend swam out to a platform in the lake, maybe about um, 50, 100 yards away. And they were waving for me to come and join them. So I jumped in the water, and it is really cold. Even in June in uh, Michigan, it takes a while for the water to warm up. So I started swimming out there. I'm doing fine. And about halfway there, all of a sudden, I've, I'm getting cramps in the lower part of my abdomen, and, and I can't kick anymore. And, and, and now it's all arms, and, and now I'm struggling, and I'm, I'm going down. Yep, I went on, now I'm underwater, and I'm coughing, and, and, get, and, and I come to the top one more time, and I can see my friends out at the platform, and they're waving to me, thinking I'm playing a game. I'm not playing a game. I'm drowning. I went down again and never came back. And as I'm sinking down, it's really cold, and and I'm and 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 I need to breathe. I need oxygen, and I'm going down further and further, and I'm getting colder and colder. And then I hit the weeds, and the weeds feel like like ice cold snakes. And then I go down farther, and then I hit the bottom. And when I hit bottom, I'm in a sitting position. And I thought, oh, this is good. Thank you. Now I can push myself to the top. No, because it's muddy there and my hands stick in. So now uh, not only am I down at the bottom of the lake, but I can't move. And then a voice comes in my head, a a voice that I remember, but I can't. The voice says to me, Andy, you have to rest for a few minutes. You need to relax. And I say to the voice, I'm having a conversation with myself. No, I can't. I got to get to the top. I want one more breath of air. And the voice says, no, no, no. Listen, just rest for a minute and everything will be okay. And I said, "Uh, do do you promise? And the voice says back to me, yes, I promise. Just let go. So I said, okay. In my mind, I said, I'll let go. And when the word go formed into my mind, I shot out of my body. And now I'm I'm in in a tunnel. And, and I'm no longer freezing cold. I'm no longer shaking. I'm no longer gasping for air. I'm, I'm, I'm breathing. I'm warm. And I'm filled with an unconditional love that after 70 years, I cannot describe because it's so wonderful. It's just, it's, and it keeps me alive. Just remembering that, remembering how it feels and remembering that, that as soon as I leave here and get back to where I belong, I'm going to be filled with it again. It's really fantastic. So, so I look down. I'm I'm in this tunnel, and I look down, and I see my body in the bottom of the lake, uh, and I I can't explain that in three dimensional words. Okay, but there I could see my body, and and as soon as I saw it, I said to myself, "That looks like my body. I don't care." I don't care about anything anymore because I'm filled with such love and this place is so warm and beautiful and 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 inviting that I don't care. I don't care about my life. I don't care about anybody I knew. I'm done. Put a fork in me. I'm all done. Okay? So so then I start to I feel a a, a like a giant magnet pulling me down the tunnel. And as I'm going for a little while, all of a sudden, in a, what I call a moment of no time, I, I'm now I'm in the tunnel, and now I'm in a giant sphere, about the size of a football stadium. And I'm looking all around in 360 degrees everywhere are little, like, motion picture screens of my lives and things I'm doing. And, and, and I wasn't confused. I understood it all. And every time I look at looked at one screen, I would relive it. Oh, yes. 
I, but I relive it differently. Now as I'm reliving it, I remember one time I saw something that didn't happen for another five or six years, but I saw my my helping my brother wash his car at our, at our parents' house. And we got into an argument in the fight. And, and, and now when I relive that, I know why the fight was there because I knew what my brother was thinking as I was talking to him. And then I went on to another and another. And it seemed like I'd been there for a, a month or so reviewing all of the things of my life. And every time I review them, I knew the feelings and thoughts of the people I interact with. So therefore, there was nothing hidden. Complete transparency. Because right if I were to review my having this conversation with you, which I did, then I know what you're thinking about as you're listening to me. I know what you're thinking about when you take a note down because everything is known. And, and, and then in a moment of no time, I pop back into the tunnel again. I don't go in a tunnel. Now I'm, now I'm in the sphere looking at my life review. Now I'm in the tunnel. And then now, now I'm in front of the light. The light takes a form of a silhouette, kind of like I, I was in the Marine Corps. So the, there, there are targets that you that you shoot at that have no face or anything, but they're kind of a human form. Well, the light was that it had a kind of a silhouette, nothing distinctive. And the light says to me, Andy, I love you. Andy, don't be afraid. Andy, we love you. And when the we love you occurred, the background of the light filled up with billions and billions of other lights, just like me. And they said in the chorus, welcome home, Andy. And I knew I was home. Ta -da, um, oh, that is some, that is a feeling to really be home where it, where you belong. And I was just filled with the joy and an unconditional love that has no bound. I, I've been trying for years and years and years. I cannot describe it. You have to be there. And the good news is everybody's going to be there because there's no other place to go. The light's the only place to go. That's where it all begins. That's where it ends. And that's where it begins again. So I'm having a wonderful time with the light. And here's, here's the interesting thing. As soon as I was absorbed into the light and one of the one of the, I finally came up with, with a way to describe what I mean. I became part of the light. Uh, imagine a, imagine a, a, a bowl of water and then a, a, a sugar, and I have a spoon, and I take a spoon of sugar. The spoon of sugar is Andy. The water is the light. I put the sugar in there, and I spin it around, stir it around, and then I pick up a spoon. The question is, can I pick up a, a spoonful of water that, that doesn't have Andy in it? No. Does that? How about the, the light? No. So they are now one, combined one forever in that mode. That's what I felt like. In other words, the light was not greater than me or less than me. We were one. We were filled with unconditional love and we were filled with love and freedom, the freedom to be who I want to be. There was no hierarchy, there was no judgment, and there was no separation in the light. Those three things are created by humans when they're on earth so that they can experience the relative, experience love and hate. You can't experience love and hate in the light because there is no hate in the light. So in order to in order to experience things, pieces of the light like me and like you change our vibrations so that we can be born in a three-dimensional linear time universe called Earth. And now that we're here, we're doing things, we're experiencing things, good things, bad things, and everything that I experience and everything that you experience goes back into the light and is, and is a, co a combination of things that never end. So I'm, I'm there with the light and, and then all of a sudden the light says to me, Andy, you have to go back. 
And I said, whoa, oh, no, 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 you got this all wrong. I'm not going back. There's no way I'm going back to planet Earth. I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm a, I was a one and done. I'm out of that. And it says the second time, Andy, you're going back. And I said to back to the lot, didn't you hear me? I'm not leaving this place. And the third time it says to me, the light says to me, Andy, you're going back. And when I heard the K in the back, I was stuffed back into my body the most horrible thing that I've experienced preceded by being in the light, which is the most wonderful thing I experienced. And I'm laying on the, I'm laying on the beach on my stomach. This was back in the old days. And they're trying to push the water out of my lungs and I'm coughing out the water. And I never lost consciousness from the time I start swimming to the, to the raft and drowned went into the light and came back, there are no blank spots. Everything is one continuous memory. Now, I've had operations here where you go under, count uh, from 99 back, and by the time I get to 96, I don't know anything until an hour later when I'm in the recovery room. There's a big blank spot. I have no blank spots in my NDE. I was conscious of the everything in that entire time. So I wake up and, and I'm and I'm and I'm crying. And why are you crying, Andy? I'm crying because I'm not in the light. Come on, I'm back on planet Earth. Give me a break. No. And and, and so my all my classmates say, Oh, they're so glad that I'm alive because I was dead when they pulled me out of the out of the lake. How they pulled me out, what they I don't know because I didn't care. I, I, when I was in the light, I didn't care about this body, this earth or whatever. I just, I just love being in the light. And so I, now I'm, now I'm, I'm horrified because I'm back on a planet. And they say, oh, tell me how, how was it when it's done? And I start my first lie. And my lie is, I can't remember anything. It's all a blank. That's a big lie. But I lied. I lied for 30 years. Because it wasn't until in the late 70s, when I read Dr. Moody's book on life after life, that I realized that I had something that was real. It was a near-death experience, and I wasn't crazy. Now, had, had I had my NDE last week, all different. Okay, I'd gone to my computer, did NDE, and I know everything. But I didn't know squat. I knew nothing, except I was filled with joy, and now I'm not. And I don't know why. Once I found once I found his book and read his book, then I read it in one night, and there were tears coming down my cheeks because finally, after all these years, I'm not crazy. It, now it makes sense. Now I understand what I experienced. It still took me years to talk about it to anyone. I never told my parents. I never. I never told my wife. I never. Until finally, one day, I decided, okay, I got to tell people what I experienced. So I told my wife and my kids, and then from then on, I found ions, and here I am, years later, talking to you about it. So that's that's the short version of an experience that I have thought about constantly for the last 70 years. All right. Why didn't you tell anybody for so, such a long time? For, for 30 years, you didn't tell anybody. So you were like 46 years old when you tell somebody the story first time? Yeah, yeah. Because you didn't know what's happening. So when you read Ray Moody's book, this is when everything came together, all the pieces came together, and you decided yes. to go to get out of yeah. closet. And let's say, you know. Well, the, the other thing is, I was brought up a very conservative Catholic family. And all of the things that I, that I learned from my religion here on planet Earth, I did not experience in the light. And, and the things that, that I was taught while on planet Earth were not, I did not see them there. So you think that this, uh, most of these teachings, the religious teachings are made up by people? For me, yes. Here's what happened. My brain suffered what I call cognitive dissonance. I had all this belief stuffed into me for all those years. And now in five minutes of earth time, 10 minutes at the max while I'm dead, 
I see all this stuff that says, no, it, it's, it's not that way. There is no heaven. There is no accounting. There is no judgment. There is no hierarchy. There is no, we're all one piece of unconditional love. Well, my brain doesn't know what to do with that. So I'm spending all this time looking for it. I studied all the major religions. I did, I, I read any book I could buy on, on life, religion, things that, things that would try to help people understand why we're here and where we're going to go when we're not here, because everybody goes. I, I knew, K-N-E-W, I knew it because that, that was a knowing. I didn't learn it. I didn't read anything there. There wasn't any, any lectures to me. It was as soon as I was absorbed into the light, I knew everything. Okay, so okay. did you bring any of that knowledge back with you? You knew everything. When you come back into the body, right? you knew everything too, or you just forgot about everything? I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't put everything in there because my brain can't hold that. Okay. okay? My brain's only three pounds. I can't put an infinite yeah. amount of stuff in it. Okay. But I, but I selectively remembered stuff. Like I wasn't, people often ask me, well, what's going to happen in, in uh, 2050? I don't care. I'm not going to be here. I'm out of here. So, see, I, I look at, I look at life on the planet like a, uh, like a Broadway play. There's 8 billion actors. We all have our costumes. I happen to be an old guy from Eastern Europe heritage living in America doing this and that. And other people have costumes, the different colors, skin, different religions, different experiences. Everybody's got a costume that they're playing it. And at some point in time, the play's over. And when the play's over for me, the costumes all go away. When all the costumes go away, then we're all one. We're all vibrating pieces of, of holographic unconditional love from the light. So we all, we're all there and we're always there. And then from time to time, for whatever reason, decide to go to another planet and experience things that can't be experienced in the light because you need to have linear time, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You need to have hot and cold, okay? You need to have three dimensions as compared to when I was in a light, my body had no dimensions. You have to have black and black and white, That's right. because of what in the light is only everything is only light. But why why do you think if the, if everything if everybody comes from the light? Yes. Why there is so much hatred hatred and so much violence on Earth, especially right now? I knew the answer in the light, uh, but I I cannot transcribe that into English words. Now, you said you don't care what's going to be in 2050. Do you care about yes. these events or you don't care? The events in the uh, world. I, I don't care because my connections here on the planet, my wife, my children, my parents, my relatives, all of that, we're, we're all together in the light when, we get, when, when everybody goes back to the light. And, they, and then we, it's, it's, like, it's like if you and I went to see a movie and it's a really good movie, and we're wa and, and it's a three-hour movie, and we're watching it, and and it's exciting. And when I watch movies, I I take a character in the movie to 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 kind of live what's on the screen. And then after three hours, the movie's over, so we walk out. I'm going to go to my house. You're going to go to your house. We know the movie wasn't real because it was entertainment for us. When I went back into the light, I knew that Andy Petro for those 17 years and whatever comes after I came back wasn't really real. It was an experience. Reality only exists in the light. Okay, you, Andy Petro, because you had this experience, you understand all that. But most people yes. are involved. Most people are involved in this drama. They are leaving this three hours movie that you just mentioned. They are inside this movie. They think this is their life. Right. And they're always, you know, this is drama and comedy and crying and dying, everything they are involved. But you realized that 70 years ago. 
Yep. You got this. You got an understanding right away when it came to you eventually. I knew it immediately that when I was absorbed into the light, the moment I was absorbed, in, I'm standing in front of the light, and the light says, "Andy, don't be afraid. Andy, I love you. Andy, we love you. Welcome home." That movement, that sucking in into the light, I instantly knew everything, and that's with capital letters. How could you know everything? Uh, because I did. Okay, I remember knowing everything. I remember being filled with unconditional love that I, all these years later here on the planet, I, every time I think about it, I have to smile because it was fantastic. And it's fantastic for everybody. There's no other place to go. That's what I, that's what I came back with. There's no place to go. Get back into the light and then do it again in some other universe, some other galaxy. You know, it's, it's hard for me to explain to people what I know and what I feel. When I was in the light, there was nothing. I didn't, I didn't read any books. I didn't go to any lectures. It was infused knowledge and feeling, the feeling of unconditional love and the knowledge of everything that exists because I am a holographic piece of the light, as are you, as are every, as the 8 billion people on the planet. And we choose to experience whatever we want to experience. So all these people who are um, dying and yep. suffering right now in Gaza or in Ukraine, yep. they all chose that before they came to the show. They wanted to experience this. And all I know is me. I'm the only person that I really know. And I know that I planted, I have vision in only one eye I, because of a birth accident. I've never seen out of my right eye. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a single-eyed version of a person. And, and it's because I wanted to, I wanted to experience that. Okay. When I was in a light, that was one of the things. When I was in a light, I could, there was no, no restrictions on my vision. I could see anything and everything, 360 degrees, all forever. And and I know that. Uh, so that was something that you planned. You wanted to come back to this earth. You wanted to be one-eyed person. You wanted to die at 15 or 16 years old. And you wanted to come back with come a back. message and tell people what happened. And from time to time, I meet somebody who needs what I have to say at that time. And that makes their stay here a little more pleasant than had I not have that conversation with them. I mean, it, I, I can't control anything other than me and whoever I'm talking to, yeah. like we're chatting right now. That's, right. This is a very good point here. Yeah, you can't control anything except you. Now, I want to ask you about that love that you felt. That voice told you, Andy, I love you. We love you. That yeah. was probably the only real love that you felt in your life. I mean, because here on earth, people feel love. You know, their parents, their spouses, kids, friends. But some, somewhat everything is with an agenda, right? You take care of me, I love you. You don't, forget yeah. about it. <laughs> Over there, you felt complete love with no agenda. That was the most beautiful love I ever heard. Yep. You never felt. And, and yeah, there was no agenda. My my when I was growing up, my parents would love me even more if I did what they told me to do. The light didn't care what I did. The light just loved me unconditionally, and I and I experienced unconditional love from the light, and therefore I unconditionally loved the light, regardless of what it would or wouldn't do. I didn't care. I had no agenda. It had no agenda. We just love the fact that we're all we're we're one. We're 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 the, a piece of oneness, and there are an infinite number there, on planet Earth now. There are eight billion pieces of oneness with the light, who are doing whatever they're doing uh, to experience life on it. And 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 when when they pass on and leave the Earth, they're going to they're going to experience the same thing I did. You think everybody's going to experience Andy or love you, or is going to be a little bit of hell or something of void for some people? What I remember is there is only one place to go into the light. 
now now you when you were over there in the light and you say that you knew everything yes now now when you came back and the earth you said that you forgot all that knowledge now how do you remember Listen. that you knew everything <laughs> because i because i can in the, in the light i was filled with knowing and feeling there was no learning there was only knowing and feelings that i knew so since you got out of the closet of in the closet you became a member of ions uh you you went on podcasts how your life changed after that did it change in some way or not not really because i i can't really say it out loud in my normal life because it's it wouldn't be accepted and what what do i have to prove anyway i don't have to, i don't have anything to prove i it's just something that i experienced i know it's true if you want to anybody who wants to listen to my story as this podcast and other podcasts and other videos i've done uh, yeah there's been a couple million people looking at the videos that i've done over the time over time that's it that that's me that's what i remember and there are thousands of other people who have their version of me- remembering what it was like to be in the light and come back again so i'm not the only one the stories are pretty similar that like you said that you were seeing your life review and you were seeing from the point of view of the other person yes you were, you kind of felt reality. yeah you felt yep. what they felt so you can learn yes. the lesson that has affected my life because even to today in interfacing with people i'm sensitive to saying things to people that 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 might hurt them because i know what it feels like now when you came back did you ever tell any of your friends or your parents or siblings about this or you waited for 30 years even with them no no one not not another human on the planet until i finished reading uh Dr. Moody's book which was in the late 70s. Yeah. So but your friends or siblings or your parents did they see any change in you? Did they notice? They say, "Hey, something happened with you, Andy. What's happening? What you're a different person." Did they mention that? I was different than most people without just saying how different. What 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 this has it really done to me? Uh, it obviously changed me because my I have one brother and we never talk about this because he's normal i'm not normal okay we know that and it, and it's okay for me it's okay because this is the hook because i know i know what i experienced is true for me and that changed everything that means I I feel sorry, I feel bad. I try to help people, but I know this isn't real. Oh yeah. But are you afraid of death at all? No. I'm looking forward to it. I died once. Okay. I what I'm afraid of is dying. The the amount of time, the minutes I spent underwater without being able to breathe and screwing up my lungs with the water and pain and all, I don't want that. But the moment that I let go, then it was worth it worth every every moment of pain was worth it to get to the light because now once i'm in the light that doesn't matter none of that matters who cares about it? it's a bad dream so let's say and this let's put it this way let's say you are a billionaire you work for all your life you build an empire you have 300 mm-hmm. companies you have you own a lot of real estate you have a lot of stuff you're a billionaire you have everything Mhm. And now you go into the light. Do you going to miss anything that you left on the earth or not? It's uh it's meaningless. It's meaningless. It's meaningless. So why people work so hard to acquire all this then? Why? Because I can only do the why for me. Okay. okay. Good. Why have why haven't I? Why am I not uh like the owner of Amazon have more money than God just about, okay? Why why didn't I do it? probably because of my nde 
because I realized that as long as I'm comfortable, this is not reality. If I own the world and go into the light, it, it's I'm I'm equal to a piece of somebody who lived in a cardboard box down by the river and was homeless for his life. There's no difference. We're all we're all pieces of the light. Okay. So Script. your yeah. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. So your realization is this that we don't have to compare ourselves with anybody. It's like you live yes. you only care about yourself what you think, what you do. It doesn't mean yes. that you are completely heartless, that you don't care about people. Yeah, that doesn't mean that I'm, that I'm uh, selfish. No, but I don't, I don't care because I know. Because right now with all this, you know, all this social media and everything is right there. People see yep. rich people, they see billionaires, they see luxury, they see everybody. I mean, a lot yep. of people are better looking than they are and you know you you don't live your life anymore you live with somebody else's life you follow somebody you look what they do and stuff like that but you lost that interest yes after I did. The, yeah and you know i'm i'm fine i'm not as i said before i'm not homeless okay but neither do i have excess amounts of money and things and i'm finding out that i downsized from my house I'm living in a thousand, one thousand square foot apartment, and I don't care about stuff anymore. I just okay. What's what are your values in life? What's the most important for you in life? Then no, not possessions, of course. You just told me that. What's the most yeah. important for you? The thing that's most important to me is to to choose to choose love over hate. And that that's a that's a job here on a planet. It's so easy to hate because all around us with all the Internet and all the information and all of the lies and all of the red hats and blue hats and uh, uh, white guys and black guys and pink guys and yellow guys. All That's part of our it's so easy to hate. That's the way our society is going. And so for me. I just want to choose love over hate more often than not. That's my full-time job. That means when I finish this and go down to have lunch, I'm going to see somebody there. That's, there's a couple hundred people living in the building that we share everything. See the, and, I, and he's going to say something that, that maybe really upset me, and I'm going to not be upset. And I'm going to do something, some small thing, to make him feel a little better instead of my reacting to what he said and firing back something that's going to hurt him. Okay. Now, if you want to share, if you'd like to share your information, we have a book to, or something to advertise. I mean, you are welcome if you want me to use that in a description of the podcast. Yeah, you could put the two, you could put the two books in there if you want. You can name them or, it, or I can put them in the podcast myself. Yeah, yeah you, can, you can find them on Amazon. Okay, well, I'll do One that. is... Yeah, uh, I'll just say it. One is alive in the light, remembering the light. That's the second one I did. Uh, the first one is, okay, this is the one that I just said. That's the second one I did. I did that in uh, 2014. And this one is called remembering the light through prosetry. And prosetry is a word that I that I made up, which is narrative and poetry to describe the experience. So they're the same story. One is all prose and one has all the poetry I wrote for 10 or 15 years injected in the right par in the right chapter. Now, you have a like do you have a positive message to leave for the audience? I guess all, I guess all I have to say is I remember the light. I remember the experience as if it happened yesterday and it happened 70 years ago. Of all the things I experienced in my life, that has never changed. As I'm, as I was telling the story at the beginning of the video, uh, the beginning of the uh, recording, and if you were to look back at when I told the story back twenty or thirty years ago, it's almost verbatim. 
it's somewhere in my brain is this experience and that never changes. So it's got to be something that is not normal. If you ask me to remember my wedding, which was 60 years ago, it's pretty spotty. I, I don't, there's a lot of things I don't remember. Ask me about my high school graduation. That happened two days after I drowned. I don't even remember it. I remember walking up and getting my diploma, but I don't remember anything else about that. But I remember this drowning thing as if it happened a couple hours ago. If this experience was so glorious, yep. did you ever think about suicide? Oh, yeah. Yes, I do. From time to time. You I still, still think, think about it. Okay. But what, yeah. what kept you against doing because when I came back, there, there, are, there are two of me. There's Earth Andy talking to you now. And there's Light Andy, who's still in a light. I'm just a part of him to come down here. So I'm. Light Andy said to me, okay, you have to go back. I don't want to go back. Go back and boom, now I'm back. Okay, didn't have any. I, Earth Andy didn't have any choice because Light Andy, the light part of me, wanted me back here to, to experience what I've been experiencing. So I'm not saying suicide is good or bad. I'm just saying that it's something that I choose not to do. So that light, Andy, is a projection of yeah, you uh, yes. here on Earth. It's like a projection yes. from the, let's say, um, movie projection is projecting your picture here on this planet. Yes. And, and it's, more, it's more alive than I am, light, Andy. And, and in the in a religious mode, we talk about guardian angels. Well, Light Andy is kind of equivalent to a guardian angel. It's me, but in the light. And part of me lowered my vibration so I could be born here on the planet. So that means you have a light Sergi, okay, who's doing whatever he's doing to make you who you are, just like I'm who I am. And it's kind of fun. Sometimes. <laughs> so you think it's only one uh, guardian angel or is several you have? Uh, there's no limit in the light. So the light Andy is, you can't put any boundaries to him because it's, in, it's, a, it's, it's infinite. See, I have to use words that don't make sense right. in English. Okay. How, can I be, how can I be in the light and be everywhere but be one thing? Well, because you can. Okay, I mean, how, how, how could I be in the light and, and know everything and then come back here and only know a few things? The answer is because I can, because that's the way it works. Yeah, some yogis, people who practice yoga deeply, uh -huh. they can be in the same time. They can be over there yeah. and here at the same time. And I do that sometimes too, when I meditate. I, can, I have my own way of medica meditating and the way, I, the way I meditate is I go to that silent space between my thoughts. So if, I, if I'm going to meditate now, then I just stop thinking. It takes practice. <laughs> stop yeah. thinking and it's very quiet in there. And yeah. then I go in there and in the stillness between my thoughts, I'm in the light. So that's how I get there. And I, and I do it a lot. You've been doing this for 70 years or just eventually? No, about the past 20 years. Because I'm, an, as an as a earth person, I'm, re, I'm learning. I'm doing things that I didn't do before. In the light, there is no learning because you can do anything all the time. Yeah. Did you decide to go by any school of meditation? There is a TM, there is a Kriya, or yeah, you just developed your own? I did them all, and then I developed my own about okay. uh, 10, 20 years ago. Okay. So you and, and study works, different kind of, yeah. And, I, and I, don't, I, don't, I don't sell it or say yeah. people to do that, but if you ask me, I'll tell you, and anybody can do it because you can, we can always stop thinking and go to that silent space. Would you like to share the right way your own meditation technique? Sure. Yeah. So, so what I do is I, I'll, I'll do it right now. I'll just go into a brief meditation. And I'll talk about it and then I'll do it. 
So what I do is I just sit down, relax, listen to my breath, goes in and out, relax my breath, and then then slowly breathe out and and breathe out any of the tension, any of the thoughts that I have, and then quit thinking. It takes a little while for me to quit thinking. And then as soon as I quit thinking, there are no thoughts. That means that there's silent space. I go to the silent space. And now that I'm in the silent space, I'm in the light. And I just stay there until something happens. Like you say, Andy, that's enough. <laughs> Come on back or some or open the door. But that's that's what I do. And it's not very complicated. And it, and it really works for me. I just love being back in the light and I do whatever opportunities I can to do it. Thank you for watching About Freedom Show. I really appreciate you. Click on one of the videos below and don't forget to subscribe.